Sutra, a true and actual good knowing advisor, is one whom the first come one prays, for it is because of his awesome spirit that one gets to hear all Buddha Dharmas. Throughout numberless compass, one might offer wealth and jewels to the Buddha, but if one does not know the Buddha's actual mark, one still cannot be said be truly giving. Commentary A true and actual good knowing advisor is one whom the first come one prays. A good and wise advisor is good in that he is able to teach and transform all living beings. Only the Buddha can be called a true and actual good knowing advisor. Bodhisattvas, Ahats, and all common and sagely Sanghans can be called good knowing advisors, but they aren't true and actual, completely perfected good knowing advisor. The kind of good knowing advisor referred to here is one whose speech is true and actual, whose speech is thus and who doesn't speak falsely. He is not a good knowing advisor who has greed, hatred, or stupidity, but rather one who diligently cultivates precepts, samadhi, and wisdom. Anyone who can completely eradicate greed, hatred, and stupidity and diligently cultivate precepts, samadhi, and wisdom is a good knowing advisor who the first come once praise the Tathagatas praise him and say, You can be a model for people and gods. And so he is a perfect model of a true and good knowing advisor for all living beings. For it is because of his awesome spirit that one gets to hear all Buddha dramas. Relying upon the good knowing advisor's awesome spiritual power, you are able to hear all Buddhas speaking the wonderful drama. Also because the Sadhagatas praise the good knowing advisor. There are spiritual power as to the aid given all living beings and enables them all to get to hear the wonderful drama spoken by all Buddhas. Throughout numberless compass, one might offer wealth and jewels to the Buddha, giving both one's inner and outer wealth. But if one does not know the Buddha's actual mark, one still cannot be said to be truly giving. One does know the Buddha's true and natural marks. The true mark of the Buddha is originally without marks, but there is nothing that is not marked. If one doesn't understand this, one isn't really giving, because one still hasn't recognized the Buddha. The Buddha is without marks. The real mark is without marks. Yet there is no place which is not marked. It is just like empty space. If you become attached to giving with marks, then blessings accrued just lead to rebirth in the heavens. The poem explains this well. Blessings attached to marks reap the result of the heavens, but just as an arrow shot into space falls when its velocity wins, so too when you get next life will make you unhappy. What you get in this life will make you unhappy. If you can recognize the real mark of the Buddha, then you won't perceive there to be anyone who gives or anyone who receives, and in between anything that is given or received, the substance of the three wills will be empty. True giving is apart from the mark of giving. If you are attached to the marks of giving, your giving is limited. To give a part from the marks of giving is to practice limitless giving. Sutra A multitude of measureless forms and marks adorns the Buddha's bodies, yet is not by means of forms or marks. That one is able to see the Buddha's, the first commands of equal and proper enlightenment, and are tranquil and constantly unmoving, yet they are able to universally manifest their bodies which pervasively fill up realms in the ten directions, just as the realm of empty space is neither produced nor extinguished. So too, all Buddha's dramas ultimately are not produced or destroyed. Commentary, the next line, says that the forms and marks which adorn the 
Buddha's bodies are by no means the true body of the Buddha. A multitude of measureless forms and marks adorns the Buddha's bodies. The Buddha's bodies have 32 fine marks and 80 minor characteristics. They compose the multitude of measureless forms and marks. They are just the Buddha's physical adornments. The true basic substance is by no means the Buddha's 32 fine marks and 80 minor characteristics. They are the Buddha's bodies. They are just one aspect of the adornments of the Buddha's bodies. Yet it is not by means of forms or marks that one is able to see the Buddhas. If you truly understand the Buddha Dharma, you shouldn't cling to marks when you cultivate. Therefore, the Vata Sutra said, if one sees me in form, if one seeks me in thought, one practices a different way and won't be able to see the first come ones. The Buddhas are without marks, taking no marks as marks. The real mark is the true mark. The real mark is just no marks. You shouldn't look for the Buddhas in marks, nor seek the Buddhas in sound. If you become too attached to seeking the Buddhas in forms and sounds, you aren't truly seeking the Buddhas. It's not by means of form or marks that one is able to see the Buddhas. You don't want to seek the Buddhas in form. If you want to seek the Buddhas in form, then real turning kings are also Buddhas. Because real turning kings are Buddha, and Buddhas are alike in form and marks. You can't use marks and forms to recognize the Buddha's true and actual body, their original substance. What is the Buddha's original substance like? It's like nothing, nothingness or the void in empty space. The first commons of equal and proper enlightenment are tranquil and constantly unmoving. The Buddhas have accomplished unsurpassed proper and equal right enlightenment. They are constantly still, quiescent and pure, yet they are able to universally manifest bodies. Although the Buddhas are unmoving, yet in the unmoving stillness, the response accordingly penetrates. This is to be according with conditions, yet not changing, not changing, yet according with conditions. The Buddhas are tranquil and unmoving, therefore they are not changing, yet they are able to universally manifest bodies. The Buddhas manifest bodies which perceivably fill up realms in the ten directions. This is also according with conditions and yet not changing, just as the realm of empty space is neither produced nor extinguished. The body of the Buddhas is just like the realm of empty space. The Buddha Dharma is also just like empty space, and yet, within the realm of empty space, we speak of there being in the Dharma realm. What is it? It is that there isn't a place, even the size of a mold of dust, where the Buddha's Dharma body doesn't reside, where the Buddha's Dharma isn't to be found, and where the worthies and sages of the Sangha of the Ten Directions are not present. Therefore, Within true emptiness is a wonderful existence. That is just the Buddha Dharma and the Sangha, the triple jewel, pervading and filling up empty space. Although they pervade and fill up empty space, there is still true emptiness. Within true emptiness is a wonderful existence, and within wonderful existence is true emptiness. True emptiness doesn't obstruct wonderful existence. Wonderful existence doesn't obstruct true emptiness. True emptiness is not empty and yet manifests wonderful existence. Wonderful existence is not existent and yet it is in the realm of empty space. The realm of empty space is just like that. It is neither produced nor extinguished. Tell me, at what point in time is empty space produced? At what point in time is it extinguished? If you are able to smash empty space, you will be able to break your attachment. If you aren't able to smash empty space, you still have an attachment to empty space remaining. And so the true substance and nature of empty space is neither produced nor extinguished. So too, all Buddha's dramas ultimately are not produced or destroyed. Ultimately, at no time, 
are they produced or extinguished? The dramas of all Buddhas are also not produced or extinguished. Sutra at that time, bright light banner Bodhisattva receiving the Buddha's spiritual power, universally contemplated the ten directions and spoke these verses. In the world of humans and in the heavens above, in all the world realms that there are, one can universally see the first commons, pure and exquisite form bodies. Commentary Courageous banner Bodhisattva finished speaking the previous phrases of all first come ones. These verses spoke of the principles of upright within marks there are no marks and how one can't really see the first come ones in even a single physical mark. Following him at that time, bright light banner Bodhisattva also spoke verses praising the Buddhas in order to reveal the Buddha's state. Bright light banner Bodhisattva also diligently cultivates the six paramitas. He especially has faith in the parameter of wisdom and he deeply enters prana. He deeply enters real mark prana and so the light of his wisdom is very sublime. Therefore his name is Bright Light Banner Bodhisattva. This Bodhisattva's wisdom light is like Druid Banner which illumines everything. This Bodhisattva receiving the Buddha's Shakyamuni Buddha's great awesome spiritual power and the aid of all the Buddhas throughout the ten directions increased and grew in wisdom and his universally and he universally contemplated the ten directions. He everywhere contemplated the causes and conditions of all Buddha's world within the nine drama realms, as it is said. Observing the opportunity he entices with the teaching. According with the person, he speaks the drama and dispenses the medicine based on the illness. That is the principle spoken of here, and he spoke these verses. He used simplified verses to praise the Buddha in the world of humans and in the heavens above, including all the Buddha lands in the ten divisions, in all the world realms that there are. One can universally see the first commons pure and exquisite form bodies. All living beings are able to universally see the Buddhas. They see the Buddha's pure, awesome and wonderful physical bodies. Sutra, just as the power of a single mind is able to produce all kinds of thoughts, so too the Buddha's single body universally manifests all Buddhas, bodies of non-dual drama. Furthermore, it is without any marks, yet within the midst of dual dramas, there manifest the marks of the adorned body. Upon understanding, the drama nature is empty and still, and arises like an illusion. Then that which one practices is without exhaustion. In this way, the guiding master appears. Commentary Just as the power of a single mind, is able to produce all kinds of thoughts, so too the Buddha's single body universally manifests all Buddhas. A single mind refers to the mind king. All kinds of thoughts are those interactive with the mind. The Buddha's single body is just the true Dharma body of the Buddha, while all Buddhas refers to the transformation bodies. The mind king is able to produce all kinds of dramas which pertain to the mind, those interactive with the mind. The single true dharma body of the Buddha is like the previously mentioned mind king, is able to everywhere make appear all the response and transformation bodies of all Buddhas, just like the mind king produces dramas interactive with the mind. So, all these Buddhas universally manifest and yet are produced from the Buddha's true Dharma body. Body is a non-dual Dharma. Body is not two kinds of Dharmas. So, if body doesn't have two kinds of Dharmas, then you see the single Dharma. Furthermore, it is without any marks. There isn't even a single Dharma that's set up. There isn't even a single Dharma. Body is just the path to enlightenment. It's just a name. Names are basically empty. And with not even a single drama established, the 10,000 dramas are all empty. Because of this, you shouldn't have an attachment 
to mark the marks of body. You shouldn't have attachments to dramas. You shouldn't go looking for body in existence and non-existence. Yet, within the midst of dual dramas, there manifest the marks of the adult body. Within these dual dramas of existence and non-existence, you aren't able to go looking for body. Body has no mark. Within the drama of one and two and the drama of existence and non-existence, right within these dual dramas, you will find the 32 fine marks and 18 minor characteristics which adorn the Buddha's body. Upon understanding the drama nature, is empty and still. You should clearly understand that the nature of all dramas is basically empty and still. The path of language is cut off and be place of the mind's activities is extinguished. One should realize that the drama arises like an illusion. If one realizes that it's just an illusion, then that which one practices is without exhaustion. Although all dhammas are still and empty and are manifested like transformations and illusions, nonetheless, they are also like cloud formations in space, multi-layered and in inexhaustible. And so, that which one practices is without exhaustion. In this way, the guiding master appears. The Buddha's response and transformation bodies are multi-layered and inexhaustible. They manifest without stop. However, you don't want to be attached to the Buddha's response and transformation bodies and consider them to be the Buddha's body, for these aren't the true body of the Buddha.